he risked his very life because the Pharisees were, from that point forward, were willing to kill all the Christians. And he comes openly with Joseph and gives Jesus' body. That's revolutionary. That, that just blows my mind. But nameless, boy, she really inspires me. I mean, she is, her story is crazy. Anybody want to guess who nameless is? You can look at chapter 4 and kind of figure it out. The Samaritan woman. Yeah. She's nameless. Here's a woman who's talked about for eternity. She's in the pages of the New Testament, and she will be talked about for eternity. And here's the crazy thing. Right now, we don't know her name. I, I'm guessing that when we get to heaven, when Jesus returns, and they're going to say, oh yeah, the Samaritan woman, woman her name is whatever. She's over, uh, you know, around the corner. There's a line of folks they are trying to talk to her. And they're going to want to talk to her. Um, she also meets Jesus at a time that's very, very um, telling. You remember Nicodemus comes in the dark of the night and he's hiding from his friends. The Samaritan woman comes in the middle of the day and she's hiding from an entire town. Now normally in those days, the women would go out in the very, very early hours of the morning, just at dawn, when it's still cool out there. I mean, they lived in the desert area. And they would journey to the well together so they, they could protect each other. And they would go there when it's cool, they get the water and they haul it back to town. But this woman comes out in the middle of the day at noon when nobody in their right mind is out there. And she meets a guy named Jesus and he, he happens to be a Jew and she happens to be a Samaritan. Now, now let me tell you how Jews felt about Samaritans. The disciples were likely in the Samaritan town and they were buying food. And they would only buy food that had a peel on it. There's something that you could peel off. Because Samaritans were such disgusting they, they were not even, in their mind, human beings. They were so disgusting that you had to rip off what they had tainted with their touch. And if you ripped it off, then you could eat what's inside. And they didn't taint the inside. And that's how they talk about racism. Talk about bigotry. Now that takes it to a whole new level, doesn't it? And so the, the disciples are likely in town and they're dealing with these Samaritans with that sort of thinking. And this Samaritan woman is out at the well, and she meets Jesus, and she's there when the rest of the town, you know, it's pretty bad when you're ostracized by unclean people. And she's out there, and Jesus says something to her. Remember what he says to her? He says, you're right. Uh, the guy you're with isn't your husband. You've been married five times before. And the one you're with now is not your husband. You know what he's telling her? You're a whore. I know you're a whore. You've been married multiple times, and the only thing left to you is to sell your body, and you're living with a guy because that's the only way you can take care of yourself. So the reason you're out here at noon, the reason you're at this well and the rest of the women are in town is because you are so disgusting, even Samaritan women won't hang with you. And yet the Son of God sat there and talked to her. And you know what he did? Now, by the way, with both Nicodemus and with Nameless, he shared the good news of salvation. Now that's blessed. We don't see her story continue other than she goes back to town and she tells the others, Samaritans, that, hey, I've met the Messiah. He's outside. Come and meet him. First evangelist in the New Testament. And she's a whore. And she's a Samaritan. She's not even a Jew. And she's a woman. But we won't even get into that. Just so you ladies know. If you were a woman back then, you were dirt. And yet Jesus shares that good news with her. So let me tell you what really all this blessed is about. If you want to be poor in spirit, be broken. You can hear this if you're broken. If you're not broken, you're going to hear this and it won't mean anything to you. If you're humble, you can hear what we're going to read next. And it will transform you. 
if you're hiding from the truth that is your life, and you're unwilling to face the fact that maybe you're shallow, maybe, maybe you're selfish, maybe you've got a boatload of problems, maybe, maybe you're not handling your finances right, maybe you're drinking in secret, maybe you're doing a, a ton of different things that just good people don't do, but you're not going to share it openly in church, these words will transform you if you let them. This is blessed. These words that Jesus shared with Nicodemus, they're transforming. And it is the essence of being blessed. John chapter 3, verse 16. This is what Nicodemus just couldn't figure out. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. And you know, let's fill in the blank on that. Let's, it's not just gave, you know, like, oh, here's my son. No, he let his son hang on a cross, a murder, a, a torture device. Humanity cursed him and spit on him and whipped him and uh, stole his clothing and humiliated him. About every horrible thing you can do, and when it says God gave his son, that's what that whoever believes in him, Jesus, shall not perish but have eternal life. You've probably memorized that sometime in the past. We saw a little number of football players' eyes. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. But whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people loved darkness. The reason people are crazy stupid is humanity loves darkness. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and who will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. And then verse 21. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. You want your life transformed? There's nothing in it. Do you realize that God did not care that a self-righteous, pompous, you fill in the last three letters, came to Jesus in the middle of the night, and he was self-righteous only in his own mind, like the whole mind, and he was hiding the fact that he was seeing the Son of God. God didn't care about that. God did not care that a lonely woman, ostracized by a town of Rejects. Came out to a well and met the Son of God and hid, tried to hide the fact that she was a whore. From Jesus. God didn't care that she was a whore. Didn't care about the, at least six men. The five she was married to, the one she was living with. Didn't care. He still delivered the message to her. And she became the first evangelist. Everything they had done might have been done in the dark, but to God that was light. He did not care. What he cared about was the message of his son. And that is, believe in me, and your life changes. It changed Nicodemus. Likely it changed Nameless. <coughs> and if you let it, it will change you. Father, I just pray a blessing upon this congregation. Father, in Jesus' name, if your Holy Spirit is moving now in the lives of those who are here, I just pray, Father, that you pound them. That you do not let them get away. That, Father, this moment, this, that, that this is becomes a, 
a snapshot in their lives like never before. If there is anyone on the bubble here this morning that just, they need to commit to you like they never have before. They need to surrender. They need to, Father, if they need to just let their fakery be exposed, I pray, Father, that your lure with them overwhelms them. That they are willing to do what Nicodemus did. They're willing to do what Nameless did. And surrender their lives to you. Father, I just pray your Holy Spirit moves now in Jesus' name. May this be a day of decision. In Jesus' name, amen.